This conference will now be recorded. All right. So in yesterday's session, we have seen how to configure the payroll basics like payroll area, control record. Yeah. We discussed about uh, period parameters, date modifiers. And one thing that is left out yesterday was ABKRS feature. ABKRS feature. So let me see if we can set it up today. So SPRO. Uh, yeah. Reference IMG. Reference IMG. We have personal management. Personal management. <coughs> personal administration. Organizational data. Organizational data organizational assignment and we have a note called as <coughs> check check default payroll area check default payroll area check default, check default payroll area so yesterday we discussed saying that you know we are going to make decisions using this feature right we make decisions using this feature that is what we discussed yesterday right so if at all it's raining i want to have coffee if it is not raining i want to have tea that is what we discussed yesterday right yes that's yes, all it's raining i only want to have coffee else tea else tea now having said that having said that we also said that if employee subgroup, yeah, if employee subgroup is, what are the two employee subgroups that we have defined? Can you make a note of it anywhere? Let's go to PA30. What is the personal number of the employee whom we have hired? 92001? No. Not yet. We wrote it like 3000 was. 8007, no. Not right. Oh, we, we are yet to hire, I guess. We are yet to hire. Hey, Abhi, your voice is very high, actually. I don't know. What is no, it's okay, sir. Are you not? Yeah, yeah. Are you not using your headset? I'm using, sir. Okay, okay. Keep mic no, okay, away from me. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah okay. Now, <clears throat> now we will have to default yeah the payroll area uh, by 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 using this decision by using this decision switch now now let us see what are the employee subgroups that we have already defined yeah employee subgroups that we have already defined. Let me manually step back. Okay. BSI. Not that one. Can you please make a note of it? Employee subgroup is, yeah, this yes, open square bracket and close square bracket. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Employee subgroup is ZM and ZM. ZM and ZM. <coughs> Employee group is open square bracket and close square bracket. Employee subgroup is ZM and ZM. Now, I'll get back and let's also quickly, quickly check the payroll area that we have set up. Yeah, payroll area that we have set up. Okay. 
here you go. Payroll area is P3 and P4. Please make a note of it. P3 and P4. P3 is monthly payroll. Yeah, P3 is monthly payroll. And P4 is weekly payroll area. Weekly payroll area. Now, what is the addition that we are going to make? Yeah. What is the addition that we are going to make? If employee subgroup is ZM. Yeah. If employee subgroup is ZM. Then the default payroll area will be P3. It will be P3. And if the employee subgroup is ZN, yeah, then the payroll area will be P4. P4. Yeah. ZM is monthly salaried employee. So if an employee belongs to monthly salaried subgroup, then the default payroll area will be P3. Yeah. B INC monthly payroll area. And if at all the employee subgroup is ZM, then the default payroll area would be P4. So this is what we are going to define yeah, using this feature. This is what we are going to define using this feature. Now, <clears throat> now, check default payroll area. Check default payroll area. Check default payroll area. Are you listening any external noises from my side? Uh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only my own. Oh, is it okay? okay. It's not clear, right? It's okay. It's, your voice is clear. Okay. Now, let us see how to define this feature. Now, this is a decision tree or feature, and name of this feature is ABKRS. It's ABKRS. Now, the initial decision here in this tree is taken based on transaction class for data retention. Yeah, it's called as transaction class. And there are two types of transaction classes. Transaction class A is pertaining to the configurations pertaining to master data and time data. And transaction class B is with respect to applicant data. Applicant data in the sense, if at all you are doing any configurations pertaining to recruitment sub module, then we are going to do some setup in this applicant data. Right now, we are only doing the configurations pertaining to master data and time data. So we will set up the feature in this particular node on as a. Yeah. And the subsequent decision here is taken based on WER case. WER case is the technical name for personal area technical name for personal area so open it up open up the WERKS and we'll be able to see that there are certain personal areas that have been included here so let us also include the personal area that we have created so click on WERKS and click on create click on create when you click on create, the system will show you all the personal areas that have been set up in the system. So if you scroll down and try to identify the personal area that we have configured. Okay, BAS INC Atlanta and then BAS INC Dallas. Continue. When you choose it and click on continue, then both those personal areas will be added here in the restructure. The tree structure. Now, if it is Atlanta, click on create, click on create, field for decision operation, field for decision operation. Now, we said that I, we, we want to make a decision based on employee subgroup. So, choose employee subgroup and transfer. Choose employee subgroup and transfer. Now we have to include the two employee subgroups that we have configured in this tree. So what do we do? 
click on P or escape, click on create. Create. When you click on create, the system will show you all the employee subgroups that have been set up in the system. The employee subgroup that we have created are ZM and ZN, right? That's right. <coughs> but we are unable to see them here. We are unable to see them in this table. Now, it also says that there are more than 500 input options. Now, in this table, we are able to see 500 options only. But okay. there are more than 500 options that are actually available. There are more than 500 entries that are actually available in this table. So if you want to see the remaining options also, click on this triangle, there's a small triangle kind of thing. Click on the triangle and remove the maximum number of hits, keep it empty and hit on enter. Okay. Now, you see there are 556 entries here. Okay. Now if you scroll down, you'll be able to see ZM and ZM. ZM is monthly salary, ZN is hourly salary, employee subgroups. Yeah, employee subgroups. If it is monthly salary, employee subgroup, click on create, return value is the payroll area. What is the payroll area? P3. P3. If it is ZN, click on create, Return value P4. 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 Transfer. Transfer. Otherwise, the return value is a blank value. Okay, otherwise, the return value is a blank value. So, if you look at this particular part, okay, if you look at this particular part, employee subgroup. If the employee subgroup is ZM, then the default payroll area is P3. If the employee okay. subgroup is ZN, the default payroll area is P4. So this is what we have decided here, right? In this decision, in this spreadsheet. This is what we thought of. So that is what we have set up. That is what we have set up. Now similarly, for Dallas as well, for Dallas as well, click on DASINC Dallas, click on create field for decision operation is employee subgroup transfer transfer then click on PERSK, click on create. Yeah, in Dallas also we will have monthly salaried employees and hourly paid employees. So, Metallica, we have to set up the same condition. So, remove the maximum number of hits option. Remove the maximum number of hits option. Scroll down. And then choose ZM and ZM. Continue. If it is ZM, the default, the return value will be P3. Three. If it is ZN, the return value is P4. Transfer. Otherwise, return value is a blank value. Right? Return value is a blank value. So, what, what we have done right now is we have defaulted the payroll area to all the employees whom we are going to hire moving forward. Whom we are going to hire moving forward. So we have considered both the we have considered both the personal areas and we have considered both the employee subgroups as well. Both the employee subgroups as well. Now, once we are done with setting up this feature, we can check check. And then we also have to activate. Now we have to check to see if whatever decision tree we have defined here, it is okay as per the SAP rules. As per the SAP rules. Now once you have checked, you will get a message here saying that there is no you know issue or anything. There are no errors. Once you get that message, you can say activate. 
Only when you activate, you will get to see the call. Transport request. Transport request. No. I think your laptop is also picking up, uh, you know, sound. No, sir, I don't have lappy. I am using my desktop. Desktop, because, because there's some yeah. very loud noise that I'm listening. I don't know why. Anyways. Maybe fan, fan song? Are you getting high, high sound? No. Yeah, yeah. You please keep, keep your mic away from your mouth. Keep the mic away from your mouth. <laughs> if you listen to the recordings anytime, you should be, you, you will understand it. Some you know small noises, you know, whatever are you know, small sounds. The mic is speaking even the small sounds also. I'm saying the headset one second. Hello. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. So now it's okay. I, I, I have changed the headset. Still, you're getting any noise, sir? No, no, see. No, now it's okay. But then keep the mic away from your mouth. There's a lot of noise Okay, fine. You are saying, you're talking and really, really listen to the loud noise. Anyways, that's fine. No, now, <clears throat> that is what is called as defaulting a payroll area. Defaulting a payroll area, and that is what is APKRS feature. Okay. APKRS feature. So the next concept is going to be administrator groups. <clears throat> administrator groups. Now, in yesterday's session, you know, we have discussed about the administrators, right? I said that you know, different administrators are going to work from different locations. That is what we discussed, right? Just for us. Okay. Let me explain it. Now, we have two locations, Atlanta, yeah, as well as Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. Now, in this, both these locations, we will have the business users or the end users who will be using the SAP system to perform their daily activities. Yeah, daily activities. So daily activities like hiring an employee or changing the pay, changing the position or changing address or any other master data of the employee you know, or performing time application, performing payroll run. These are the daily activities or transactions that the end users or the business users will be doing on the SAP system, right? Using the SAP system, they are the end users. So these end users, we will have different end users pertaining to different modules. Usually. For example, for personal administration, yeah, personal administration, we will have <clears throat> administrators pertaining to personal administration. So let us assume that we have two personal administrators 
and in, in Atlanta and three personal administrators in Dallas. These are nothing but okay. the end users. Yeah. Let us assume that time admins. Let us assume that there is one time in one time admin in Atlanta and two time administrators in Dallas. And payroll admins. Payroll admins. Let us say there are about four payroll admins in Atlanta and six payroll admins in Dallas. Yeah. And similar to benefits administrators. Benefits administrators. Let us say there is one benefits administrator in Atlanta and two in Dallas. Two in Dallas. So these are nothing but the end users or the business users, yeah, who will use the SAP system on a daily basis to execute different transactions. To execute different okay. transactions. So what we can do is we will group all the administrators working in Atlanta by giving one under under one group. So we okay. have about how many? Two, three, four, four, four and four is eight, eight administrators. So these okay. eight administrators, we are going to group them. Yeah, we are going to group them saying that SV Atlanta admin group or sorry BS BS right is the example BS INC BS Atlanta admin group. Yeah, admin. And the, the the administrators who are working in Dallas, they have five, and two is seven and thirteen. So 13. all these thirteen administrators, we will say, we will group them using another called as PAS INC Dallas admin group. Yeah, admin group. Okay. So this is what we are going to do right now. This is what we are going to do. Yeah. And not just this, we can also default the administrator groups based on personal area. Yeah, personal, personal area. We are going to default the administrator group based on personal area. There's a feature, there's a feature called pinch feature using which I will default these administrator group based on personal area. So, if the personal area is BAS INC, yeah, BAS INC Atlanta, then the default admin group will be BAAG. And if the personal area is BAS INC Dallas, yeah, Dallas, then the default admin group will be BDAG. Yeah, BDAG. All right. So, let us see how to do this. Let us see how to do this. Now, <coughs> SPR, we have reference IMG. I am personal management personal administration we have organizational data and organizational assignment organizational assignment and we have a note called as define administrative groups Define administrator groups. Define administrator groups. And here, here also we are seeing a feature called PINCH, pinch feature. We are seeing a feature called pinch feature. And using this pinch feature, we will default the administrator group based on personal areas based on personal areas. So the initial decision is taken based on the transaction class. Transaction class. So the transaction class that we are going to use is, you know, that we are going to set up uh, the tree structure is under master data and time data. And under this we have the personal areas. So let us include the personal areas that we have configured 
So click on create, include the personal areas. Atlanta and Dallas. Atlanta and Dallas. If it is Atlanta, if it is Atlanta, then click on create. The return value is the administrator group. What is the administrator group? BASINC Atlanta admin group. Yeah. If it is Dallas, you can create return value is VDH transfer. Transfer. Now, once we are done with the setup of this, check. Yeah, it shows dictionary is error free and then activate. Continue. Continue. Feature was generated. Yeah, feature was generated. Okay. Now get back. Now the concept, now, now the next thing is define administrators. Now the next thing is define administrators. So here click on new entries, click on new entries. Now whatever, you know, whatever we said here, there are eight administrators in Atlanta and 13 administrators in Dallas. So these administrators, these are the real-time employees, we need to define them here again as the administrator groups. Again, as a respective administrator groups. Yeah. Now, V A A G, yeah, V A A G, zero zero one, yeah. Let's say the administrator name is Peter, yeah, Peter, and then V A A G. Then another administrator name is let's say Rose, yeah, Rose. Then B A A G zero zero three. Then let's say Paul, some Paul, and and uh, like this you can actually find the administrators. Okay. I guess each group. I guess each administrator group. Now V. Now let's define it for define it for the other administrators group under the other personal area. Now V D A G zero four. We have uh, let's say Sam or some guy. Then V D A G zero five. Let's say some some V D A G zero six some. All right, now save it. Okay. Save it. Now, if you na yeah. navigate back, you just navigate a step back. Okay. okay. You're also seeing the telephone numbers and SAP names and all this stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, these are all the real time end users or the business users. Yeah. Okay. Whose contact details also can be given. Whose okay. contact details also can be given. Have feedback. Now this is the concept of the administrator groups and pinch feature. Yeah, administrator group and pinch feature. Using these administrator groups, we are going to define the 
real time users and users or the business users okay. to use the SAP system on the customer for the daily transactions. Okay. Next thing. Personal number ranges okay. and sure. personal number ranges and number feature. So what is this personal number ranges and number feature? What is this? Now <clears throat> now there might be certain customers who say that when I hire an employee, yeah, when okay. I hire an employee, I want the system to generate the number range, number numbers, first numbers of the employee codes. Of the employee okay. codes. Okay, that is what they say. And they also might say that okay, for Atlanta, I want a number range for the employees starting with thousand to ten thousand. And for Dallas, I want personal number ranges starting with ten thousand one to twenty thousand. Okay. To twenty thousand. So this might be a requirement. Atlanta okay. and Dallas. That means when I hire an employee, the system should automatically assign employee code. Yeah, employee code or employee okay. number. Personal okay. number. Yeah, personal okay. number. So that is okay. what we are going to define right now. Personal number ranges. Personal okay. number ranges. So this might be one requirement. The other requirement can be the other requirement can be that. The system might also say, sorry, the customers also might, might also say that, no, I don't want the system to generate. I will assign personal number manually. Okay, they might say that way also, that the okay. users will assign them personal numbers manually, personal number manually. So one is auto generation, yeah okay which is, which is called as internal internal number range and the other one is manual manually assigned which is called as external number range yeah auto generation is internal internal number, number range manual is external number range external number range right so let us see how to go ahead and set up this column. Set up this particular configuration. Now, in personal management, okay. personal administration, we have basic settings. Okay. Basic settings. You have maintain number range intervals for personal numbers. Maintain number range intervals for personal numbers. Click on display intervals. When you click on display intervals, you get to see a table. And this table, because this is a training system, many people have defined their own ranges. Their own personal number ranges. The first one here, whatever we see here, 0, 1, is a personal number range 1, and it starts with 1 and then set 2. The second okay. number range here is starting with 70,000 and ending at 79,999. The third one is starting with 51 and ending at 52. Fourth one starting with 206 and ending at 219. Triple 1, 119. So like this, many people I think just for fun also they would have created all this stuff. Okay. That is how it looks like to me. Normally yeah. no one will define such short intervals. If yeah, you define exactly. intervals, that is an interval that should be there forever and ever. So it should okay. be like something like starting with one and ending with twenty thousand. Starting with twenty thousand okay. one and ending at forty thousand, something like that. So that we don't have to keep them changing again and again. Right. Okay. So this is someone you know who has set up it uh, just for fun. Looks like that. So now if you scroll down, 
we have seen many 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 of them but for one of these you see there is a checkbox is checked here yeah so for whichever intervals the checkbox is checked it means that this is an external number range external external number range ext stands for external assignment external assignment of personal numbers external assignment of personal numbers which is called as external number range so if you check this checkbox while creating the number range this number range will become external number range and the users will have to manually assign the personal numbers to the employees yeah personal numbers to the employees right that is what it means next let us go ahead and define the number range of charts let me try it out what you want is available so if you want to create navigate back you can change it all you can change it all you can insert line I want to define 51. Yeah. And let me try this if it works or not. Because okay. there are so many numbers in this. And then okay. well, let's see. Enter intervals without overlap. You see the message here? Okay. That okay. Means this is getting overlapped with some other interval. That's what it says. Okay. It's overlapped with some other number range. So, uh, let's Okay, it's okay. Yeah, there's no message. So now, by defining this number range itself, if you check this checkbox, if you check this checkbox, it means that this number range interval will become an external number range. When I hire an employee, yeah, the system will not assign the personal numbers. We will have to manually give the personal numbers. So right now I'll just let it as an internal number range only. Okay. I'll leave it as an internal number range. Save it. Continue. And get back. And back. Then determine defaults for number ranges. determine defaults for number ranges now here we see another feature called as numco feature yeah we see another feature called numco feature this is a decision tree and we default values using decision tree and what are we going to default here we are going to default the personal number range we are going to default the personal number personal. range based on any parameter of our choice based on the parameter of our choice now if the and here the initial decision is taken based on the country grouping if the country grouping is usa because we are doing the configurations on the country grouping called as usa and the further decision is taken based on the company code yeah if you want to default a number range based on company code that is also possible yeah here again is 3000 okay. company code someone has someone would have defaulted okay they have made further additions you see they have made a further addition based on personal area so open up the personal area open up the personal area click on the value here okay. yes call create click on include the personal areas that we have configured Atlanta, yes. We can continue. 
Okay. If it is a planter, what is the default number range? Written value will be 41. 41. The number range in zone. Two digit code. If it is a Dallas, it's gonna be 40. 40. 40 is something which someone else has defined previously. So I'm just assigning okay. it. And 41 is the number range that we have defined. And I'm assigning it to Atlanta. Now, after defining the decision tree, always we need to first check. Check if it is okay as per the SAP rules or syntax or not. Then activate. Activation is mandatory. If you don't activate, the feature will not get saved. You will transport and you will not be able to transport this feature. It is as good as you have not done it. If you don't activate it. Now it is back and further back. <coughs> now, which is the concept of personal number ranges and number feature is also completed. Now, let us go ahead and hire an employee. Let us go ahead and hire an employee. Now, Let's do a quick recap of what we have done till now. The first thing what we have done is we have created the org structure. All right. yeah? That is a physical structure of the company in which we have defined the personal, the personal areas, personal sub areas. Sorry, we have defined the, uh, in the org structure, we have defined the organizational units yeah and uh, jobs positions etc yeah etc yes sir. and next we have defined the enterprise structure yeah enterprise structure so in enterprise structure yeah we have defined the personal areas and sub areas and all the stuff then we have defined the personal structure yeah personal structure so using the personal structure we have defined the employee groups and subgroups. Then we have defined the payroll area, payroll visits. Payroll visits, that is payroll, payroll area, control record, ABKRS feature, and all this stuff. Then in today's session, we have defined, yeah, we have defined admin groups. Yeah, and then we also define the personal number ranges. Yeah, personal number. number. So these are the basic configurations that we require. Yeah, at least, at least these are the basic configurations that we require to hire an employee. To hire an employee. These are the basic configurations that we require to hire an employee. Employee. Now let us go ahead and hire an employee. Now, if you want to hire an employee, go to PA30. Sorry, go to PA40. The transaction code is PA40. PA40. Yeah. And before this, let me do a little change. One of the notes. I'll explain it later so I am doing this.
there's a reason why I'm doing this. So I'll explain you when we actually set up the action rates moving forward. Yeah. Now, uh, if if you want to hire an employee, there's an existing action type called as hire. Yeah. There's an existing okay. action type called as hire. Choose hire. Choose hire. And we need to give some inputs out here. So against which personal area you want to hire. I want to hire employees against the personal area for NAS. Right now, I want to hire against personal area for NAS at Okay. And against which employee group you want to hire an employee? I want to hire against the employee group called as VASINC firm. I want to hire employee as a permanent actor. And against which employee subgroup you want to hire? I want to hire the employee as monthly salary employee. Right. So whenever you are hiring an employee, you need to tell the system. Yeah, you need to tell that whether the employee is going to be a permanent employee or a contractor, right? Whether the employee is a monthly salary employee or an hourly paid worker, right? And against which personal area you want to hire, against which personal sub area you want to hire. Yeah, all these things have to be defined, right? So that is what we are doing, right? We are saying that the employee whom I am going to hire right now will work from Atlanta and is a permanent employee and then he's a monthly salary. After giving these three inputs, click on execute. When you click on execute, the system will take us to the next screen. Yeah, it will take us to the next screen. And I want to hire the employee start date will be 1 3 2020. Yeah, 1 3 2020. And date of birth and this is not required right now. Now, the action type is hire. And why do you want to hire this employee? I want to hire because it's an expansion. We are doing an expansion in the company. So I want to hire. Then, what is the position against which you want to hire an employee? What is the position against which you want to hire this employee? Now, the position is choose import type and choose object. The position against which I want to hire this employee is the VAS INC manager production. So these are all the positions that we have defined in organizational management, right? In our management, we have defined all these positions. And we are seeing the output right now because we are able to hire the employees against that position. So choose VAS INC manager production. Manager production. Then you have personal sub area, which is the personal sub area against which you want to hire this employee. I want to hire the employee against the personal sub area called as production. Right? Hit on enter. Hit on enter after using the basic inputs. Hit on enter and save. Save. When you save, the system will take us to the next screen. In which we are expected to view some inputs. Now, <clears throat> even before we give the inputs, observe a few things here. The first thing that you need to observe here is what is this? So, what is uh, this? we have given. Hmm? Hmm? Personal number. personal number, starting personal, pers personal number. So we yes. have just defined, just a while ago we have defined the personal number range 41, yeah? Okay. And the 41 is the number range that we have defaulted against Atlanta. Right. In Namka feature. <clears throat> In Namka feature. So this is the output of Namka feature. That the personal number has been generated. Thing. Company code. That's a company code. Company code is something which is getting populated here because we have assigned company code to personal area.
we have assigned company code to company personal code. area in one of the nodes in one of the nodes wow. so that's the reason we are seeing the company code being populated here yeah being okay. populated here. next payroll area p3 p3 nice. is getting defaulted here p3 okay. is getting defaulted here because of the abkrs feature that we have defined yeah by defining the abkrs feature we said that for the employees subgroup zm yeah monthly salary employees the payroll area will be p3 payroll area will be p3 so even this got defaulted based on the abkrs feature that we had defined and finally administrator groups so administrator groups we are seeing an administrator group called as VAAG here yeah and we are only seeing those administrators whom we have defined under VAAG the reason okay. is we have defaulted the administrator group based on the personal area in pinch feature in pinch feature right. So that is the reason why we are seeing this administrator, particular administrator group, and we are only seeing those administrators who are under the administrator group called as VAAG, which we have defaulted against Atlanta. So you can assign the administrator group, administrators here, personal admin, time admin, and payroll admin. Right now, hit on enter. And another thing also that you can observe here is we have assigned the position. We have hired against this position, but we are already we are also seeing the organization in this one. Yeah, okay. getting populated because we have we we have set up a relationship between the position and our unit already in, by defining the art structure. Yeah. When defining the structure, we said that this position belongs to the organization unit. We already defined it. For that reason, we are seeing the organization unit yeah, getting populated. Getting populated. So this is this is the output for all the configurations that we have done till now. Yes, sir. Yeah? If you understand it properly. This is the output of all the configurations that we have done till now. Save it. Save it. Yes, sir. It's getting saved actually. Then this is uh, the system is triggering the next screen or next info type. This is actually next info type for us or plan in time. So we will we'll do it a little later. We'll capture it a little later after the condition. Okay. And the next info type is personal data. So this is the system is triggering. Yeah. Now, first name is, so let's say, Abhi. Yeah. Okay. And Misham. Let's say the SSN is some random SSN number I'm giving here. Yeah? Okay. And the date of birth is some random, random date of birth. And all this is simply you know, some inputs. And this can be right. Get on it. Get on. Now save it. This is an input I call as personal data. Yeah, this is also a master input type called as personal data. And whenever we discussed about whenever we discussed about personal administration, we said that in the personal administration, while hiring an employee, we are going to capture the employee data. That is what we said, right? So okay. here is now these are all input types pertaining to master data, and the system is actually prompting us to capture this information so if it is valid and required right now we can capture it otherwise we can cancel it okay we can cancel it.
system is actually asking us to capture the address of permanent address. So while hiring, the system wants to, you know, the system is prompting us to capture all the relevant information. Um, this is what we are doing right now is hiding. Okay. The system is actually prompting us. State is not here. You have to give some valid zip code. If you don't give a valid zip code, the system will not accept it. Save. We have saved that is of this employee. Like this, the system will keep triggering info types one after another. So this is called as addresses input. Type. This is addresses input. Type. So now let's go to PA30. PA30 is a transaction code using which we will be able to see the employee master data. Yeah, okay. using which we'll be able to see the employee master data. So the employee whom we have hired is with the personal number, whatever this is. Okay. Whatever it is, that is a personal number, and then name, and the employee group, and the employee subgroup against which this employee got hired, personally against which the employee got hired, and the info types that we have maintained while hiring. These are all the info types that we have maintained while hiring this employee. Okay. Yeah, and hiring this employee. Okay, Abhi. So what is this period? What is this? Period from from and to which is beside oh, yeah. for that. Oh. Ah, this one. Now whenever you want to create a new info type record, okay. Yeah, uh, whenever you want to view an existing info type record, yeah. Okay. You can view the start date and end date here. And the system will show you only those info type records of an info type which fall in this duration. Okay. Yeah. Or you'll be able to create a new info type record only for this duration. For this duration. Okay. That is the importance of the period. Now. I think I'll stop here for now, Abhi. Yeah. Okay, sir. I'll, I'll tell you one second. Okay, sir.